Well, hello and welcome once again to Escopti for our Sunday worship. We are continuing our readings in the Gospel according to Matthew and exploring what it means to be disciples of Jesus Christ. I'm delighted to be joined this week by members of Alid Missionaria as we continue our journey through the diocese and we'll begin in a moment with our reading from the Gospel according to Matthew which will be read to us by the Reverend Gwenda Cooper who will be reading in Welsh. But before I hand over to Gwenda I invite you to join with me in prayer. Heavenly Father we thank you that you are the Lord of the ages, the giver of all good things. Be with us in a time of need Bless us and our relationships, keep us and our families safe, and grant that we may know your grace at work in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. And so uh, we are talking about the power of God's love this week, and I invite Gwenda now to read the passage for us. Darlleniad o'r Efengil Matthew. Aeth Iesu allan oddi yno, ac yma dawodd i barthau Tairus y Seidon. A dyma wraig a oedd yn ganu'n eas o'r cyffiniau hynny, yn dod ymlaen a gweiddi. Sir, trwy garhaw'r ffydd fab Dafydd, y mae fy merch wedi ei meddiannu gan gyffrel ac yn dioddaf yn enbyd. Ond nid atebodd e'r un gair iddi, a daeth ei ddisgyblion ato a gofyn iddo. Gyr hi ffwrdd oherwydd y mae'n gweiddi ar ein hôl. A tebodd yntau, ni ym hanfonwyd at neb ond at ddefaid colledig tu Israel. Ond daeth hithau ac ymgrymu iddo gan ddweud, Sir, help a fi. A tebodd Iesu, nid yw'n deg cymryd bara'r plant a'i daflu i'r cwn. Dywedodd hithau, gwir, Sir, ond y mae hyd yn oed y cŵn yn bwyta o'r brwsion sy'n syrthio oddi ar fwrdd ei meistri. Yna atebodd Iesu hi. Wraig, mawr yw dy ffydd. Boed i ti fel y myni. Ac fe achawyd ym herch o'r munud hwnnw. Diolch yn fawr, Gwenda. A homily this week will be led by a Dr Hugh Lloyd, who is a reader in the Aled Mission area. Thank you very much, Hugh. We look forward to what you have to say. Hello. This is Pilot, and he's going to help me with a story later on. Aren't you? Today's story is a bit tricky. It's got some puzzling things in it. Pilot will help me, I'm sure. The story of the Canaanite woman and her interaction with Jesus seems to portray Jesus as ignoring, if not rejecting, a woman in distress. This does not really sound like him. First, he did not answer her, and then he initially rejected her plea. Not only that, but he seems to use humiliating language when he refers to dogs. However, her quick-witted banter seems to won Jesus over, and he granted her wish her daughter to be healed. The whole exchange can seem a bit odd at first sight, but becomes more understandable and is taken in context. In the passage in the Bible preceding today's reading, the Pharisees and scribes had challenged Jesus for letting his disciples break with tradition of the elders by not washing their hands before they ate. Jesus responds by saying to the crowd, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles. The disciples warned Jesus that the Pharisees had taken offence at what he had said because he had challenged their ways. But Jesus explained that following tradition does not always make things right, but it's the words that come from your heart that defines you. The Pharisees and scribes could follow the letter of the law, but evil intentions, actions and words 
defile a person. To eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Following this, Jesus and disciples went to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Maybe he needed to get away from the crowds, or possibly he was aware of the anger that he had stirred up with the Pharisees. He may just have needed some peace and quiet. So, when some woman comes out shouting to him about her daughter, he may have felt weary of the constant demands upon him. And then, as a Jew, Jesus would know that he should not talk to any woman in public, let alone to a Canaanite, who Jews hated, which would just make the situation worse. It would make him ritually unclean. Moreover, she was asking for Jesus to do something for her. So he says to her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The woman had overcome the difficulty of talking to a Jew because of the love that she had for her daughter. She had called Jesus Lord, Son of David. She recognised in him his godly nature and had faith in him. She perseveres and kneels before him and pleads again. She had faith that he would answer her plea. But Jesus said to her, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And as we know, she replied, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Ah, here is Pilot again. As you can see, he's a, a black Labrador. And uh, like any black Labrador, he's always hungry. So he's always ready to eat scraps off the table, aren't you, Pilot? He's always ready. So, when I hear this story, picture of a dog eating scraps that fall from a master's table. That rings true to me. The woman was saying to Jesus she did not expect to join the meal, but just wanted a little bit of what Jesus was bringing to the world. Jesus was showing God's gracious acceptance of all people. Good boy. Perhaps Jesus then thought of what he'd been saying to the Pharisees. Traditional laws may have made him richly unclean through talking with this woman, but his words and actions were much more important. They showed his love and compassion. He said, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And he healed the woman's daughter instantly. In a world scarred by social, racial and sexual prejudice, we should put aside any prejudice that we have and offer our love to others. We should strive for a world where hate and equality are no longer accepted. We can also learn from the Canaanite woman that through persistence and humility and faith, we can receive that same love and compassion from Jesus, which is available to us all and which he gives us so freely. Amen. Our intercessions this week will be led in English and Welsh by two of the younger members of the mission area, Josh Hall and Catherine Churchill. Welcome Josh and Catherine and let us pray. Loving God, may your church throughout the world show your love for all peoples and nations. Bless all who seek to heal divisions and to do away with prejudice. Give courage to all who reach out to those in need and who seek to welcome the rejected. May your church reflect your saving love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask forgiveness for the sin and arrogance that divides us and creates barriers between nations and peoples. We pray with love for all minority groups, for those who are judged by their race, colour or history. We remember all who are refugees, homeless or outcasts of society. We ask your blessing upon all who work to bring a new unity and an understanding between divided peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, 
We thank you for our homes and for all who have accepted us in love and generosity. We ask your blessing upon our homes and the community in which we live. We give you thanks for those who in love brought us to you, for those who shared their faith and their love with us. We pray for homes where there is no faith or where there is no love, for all who are suffering from broken relationships and all who feel estranged from the world around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, at your words the girl was released from her distress. We pray for all who are weighed down with sickness and infirmity. We pray especially for all those whose lives have been affected by the coronavirus outbreak. And our hearts go out to all who have lost loved ones to the virus. Guide us, O Lord, through this pandemic as our daily lives and routines are changed. And help us heal our country from the loss we have encountered, both economically and personally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you bring life to all who call upon your name. We rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord. We pray for all our loved ones departed from us. May they, with Mary and all the saints, enjoy the fullness of your presence in eternal life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And well then, Diolch am wneud i ni gyd yn ni gwrw. Diolch bod ni gyda enwa wahanol, diddordiabau wahanol a cefndiroedd wahanol. Roedd ti wedi wneud i ni edrych yn wahanol hefyd a chwydym ni yn ddiolch gael. Dysgu ni i parchu arall a sut maen nhw a cadael i ffawd bod ei hun. Os bys ni gyd yr un fath, bydd o'r byd yn ddiflas. A ni fyddai cymaint o syniadau da na unrhyw beth yw ddysgu. Bys o'r byd yn edrych yn un fath, ond rwy ti wedi wneud pob un ohonyn ni yn hollol y digrwyw eu llall, ac wedi wneud un byd yn llan hygoel. Amen. So it's been a great pleasure to be accompanied by members of Alid Missionaria this week. I wish you every blessing for the week ahead and I pray that through your own journey of faith that in humility you will find God's love upholding you and supporting you in the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father you come to us as your children and teach us to love you and to love one another. Bless us in our journey through life and guide us in all that we do. A bendeth du hotlat liog, a tard a mar bar a sprit glan, a vorn a plith a cadrigo good achwi, on wastad. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you in your midst to keep you safe this day and for evermore. Amen.